Countdown to Zero, a film that makes the case for nuclear disarmament. It's been screened by a host of administration officials, including Secretary Clinton, and it opens in U.S. theaters in July. Welcome. Let's first, we had a historic signing between the American and Russian president today, but let's first get to the film, which is, g give me the premise for the film. Sure. Um, well, Countdown to Zero is, is a terrifying, uh, edge of your seat, eye-opening kind of uh, wake-up call about the, the urgent threat posed by uh, terrorism uh, proliferation and the uh, accidental use of nuclear weapons. And it has a great uh, group of people, and it has uh, Tony Blair, President Musharraf, uh, President Gorbachev, President Carter, President de Klerk from South Africa, members of the CIA, Valerie Plame. I mean, it's a, it's a really amazing group of people. Um, we screened the movie in Sundance uh, a couple months ago, and as you said, it's coming out in July. One of the things in this agreement today, um, one of the, th the film makes a distinction between sort of nuclear weapons as we thought about them during the Cold War mm -hmm. and this new threat. That's right. Today's signing had a sort of uh, antiquated feel to it. It mm -hmm. felt like something from the 70s. How, right. how big a deal was that? It's a really big deal. Like everything, you need to start somewhere. And uh, this is the greatest reduction in nuclear, uh, strategic nuclear arms since in a generation. Um, and next week, as, as you know, the president's convening 47 heads of states. By the way, Washington is going to be pretty locked down yeah. <laughs> with 47 motorcades going around. Um, but there, they're going to talk about securing all nuclear materials uh, worldwide. He's, the president's got a four-year plan to do that. Um, and as a Global Zero member, uh, we support the president in this, and we urge the leaders coming into D.C. to uh, adopt his plan. But the, if it's the terrorist and these kind of, um, st the big state actors, the president's dealing with, that's one piece of the pie. But right. what you're talking about is uh, a little bit harder to track. You won't see it going away at a signing uh, ceremony. A absolutely. But, but you have to start somewhere. So uh, the, the plan that we have, uh, the Global Zero Commission has put together, uh, which is very much in alignment with where the president is heading, is you have to start somewhere. So at first, Russia and the United States have created, has signed a bilateral agreement to reduce their nuclear weapons. Um, they're going to start right into another agreement, hopefully right after that. And the idea is that as the United States and Russia reduce their nuclear arms, um, then the rest of the world can then also get involved in starting to slowly uh, reduce on a verifiable, intrusive level. Um, what happens is ultimately the only way to really stop a terrorist, who by the way can buy a bomb, mm -hmm. steal a bomb, uh, how can you stop them from doing that is to get rid of them all, to get rid of all the bombs and to uh, get rid of the material that they can use to make a bomb. In making this case, you you have a problem, which is that most people kind of think that signing ceremonies take care of this. This is something from the past. I wonder if you can give me your sense of the Bush administration, who during the lead up to the Iraq war, one mm -hmm. of the things they said was, you know, if we don't do something now, <laughs> we'll have a mushroom cloud. The clear point there was, it seems right. to be in line with what you're talking about, which is a terrorist will get nuclear material and will have a nuclear right, event. Right. Is that similar to the case you're making or, or different? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, of course, the uh, former administration was wrong, of course, and there weren't uh, nuclear weapons in Iraq. Uh, and But that's, that's kind of besides the point. Um, we're at sort of what could be called the nuclear tipping point right now. For instance, if Iran acquired a nuclear bomb, then you'd have other countries in the region that might feel forced to get them as well. And all of a sudden, it's game over. Um, right now, there's about 40 countries in the world who, if they decided today they wanted one, within about a year, they could produce it. They're all nuclear capable. They've decided not to. And we have countries that have given them up. Like uh, we talk about in the movie, uh, President de Klerk from South Africa decided to give up. He had about six uh, uh, Hiroshima-sized uh, bombs that they gave up. Uh, when, when Russia um, fell apart, in a sense, and uh, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, um, and one of them losing track of, uh, uh, I was talking to Secretary James Baker, through sticks and carrots, they gave up their nuclear mm -hmm. weapons. What about those, the, these, you know, North Korea and Iran? The, the old argument is, look, we can't give up anything because we're never going to be able to convince uh, Iran and North Korea. <laughs> what, do they, what does your film say about that? That's right. Well, you, you would have to be naive to say, of course, that you would want to give up, unilaterally give up your weapons if a country like Iran acquired it or North Korea didn't give them up. So. The point is not, we would never want to advocate something like that. Obviously, our national security is of the highest importance. Um, the idea, though, is, and there's a commission of greater minds than mine who have put this together, and they're backed by former presidents, national security advisors, military leaders, and the such, and quite a few of them, that have put a plan together that deals with monitor monitoring systems, uh, verification systems. And again, it, it is a slow process 
of reducing nuclear, of our nuclear arsenals, starting with the Russian United States. You know, we own over 90% of the weapons uh, around the world. Um, and then once we get down to a level of a thousand or so, then a country like China might say, okay, they'd be interested in, in getting involved because the pressure now is going down. Before the pressure was going up, we, with MAD, mutually assured destruction, uh, United States and Russia were increasing our arsenals. Then China decided, well, of course, they needed to. And we can reverse that cycle.